the government security and CT marketplace is a very different world. If you look at the, the number of police forces uh, you know, in England and Wales, and of course you've had Scotland to that, there are 30 government departments involved, there are all the agencies involved, and so the demand side is, is very diverse and fragmented, and, and there is no uh, guarantee of a common procurement process. And this, this worried me when I came into to office. And the Office of Security and Counterterrorism, uh, I, I put considerable pressure on them to consider this. Uh, we are trying hard to find a consensus, building on where we are now to align interests of our many stakeholders. Um, I'm not proposing we copy the MOD processes, that wouldn't work. Um, but we've got, I think, to do a lot better in terms of ensuring that, that business and industry is able to look at a sort of cohesive whole so they're responding to something that is a lot more balanced and makes a lot more sense. And I think that would be to, to everyone's, uh, everyone's benefit. Um, at, at the risk of embarrassing any chief constables here, I was at a dinner sitting with a chief constable each side of me. One of them was explaining what he was about to buy, and the other one did say, well, there's no way I'm going to buy that then. And I thought this was a bit of a, bit of a belter, uh, and I'm sure there are very good reasons for it, but it just added to my feeling that actually we really do have to move forward uh, in, in this area. Now, our security industry, and you're obviously very much part of that, has a wealth of solutions to offer. Um, and we showcase these capabilities in a number of ways. Uh, for example, the very uh, successful HUSD, the Home Office Scientific Development Branch exhibition, which maybe some of you have attended or exhibited at. Um, and the Home Office and, uh, sorry, and there are a number of other things like that, which I've spoken at because I see this area as so important. Now, the Home Office and the UKTI DSO, what was the old DSO, um, we're looking at expanding uh, and exploring how we expand this platform uh, so we can exhibit more UK products because I absolutely know from my travel around the world that we are ahead of many countries in the world. You know, we're probably about two years ahead in lots of areas, uh, a little bit less in some and more in some others, but we are ahead of them. And there's a huge, huge opportunity here, I believe. And what I want is an ability to take this UK capability uh, uh, in security to the world for the benefits of all of us. And so what I want to do is get a much bigger sort of coordinated exhibition, rather rather like a sort of, well, probably not, might well be at Farnborough, rather like the big air shows, that sort of thing, but a much bigger scale, exhibiting all of our security capabilities and our ability, getting all the right people from around the world there. Um, and once I have got these details clearer in my own mind, we will actually be talking to risk and, and thus to BSIA and others. Um, so they have this opportunity. I think there are huge opportunities. We have, we have uh, unique experience. We have particular strengths, a uh, renowned track record in high-quality defense and security systems. We've got some specific technological areas, such as some border protection, transport security. Again, where we're ahead of many other nations. I think our police uh, have a, a justified worldwide reputation for very effective, successful, and uh, professional policing. Uh, our systems and equipment for everyday policing and for counterterrorism are in use on the front line, uh, and it's not equipment that's only held in reserve. I mean, the fact it's used and we use it and we have a problem and we've been successful with it is very important. It's rather like when I used to go around the world as a battle group commander uh, and we would be trying to sell defense equipment, I would point out some, sometimes that actually we used our equipment by fighting people, whereas in quite a lot of countries were flogging kit that they had no intention of ever fighting anyone with, and I thought it made it uh, rather less attractive to get hold of. But we use this kit of ours. Um, and, uh, and there's also the fact of our special position, which Churchill, of course, used to refer to. Uh, we lie at the intersection of three circles of influence, the United States, Europe, and the Commonwealth, and I think that can be played usefully as well. And there's no doubt that counterterrorism and security are international problems, and the marketplace is global. And putting geopolitics to one side, uh, the facts I mentioned provide the UK with a very excellent platform for marketing and sales in overseas security and CT markets. And I know a lot of the people here today are involved in firms that do have this global reach, but I think there's much more we can do. I really do think there's more we can do. And we will get feedback to us for that. It'll help us as well in our in our ability to excise this cancer, as I say, of extremist terrorism. Now, when the Warsaw Pact was the greatest military threat to the UK, uh, we absolutely ensured our military procurement was up to the task. Maybe some would say it hasn't changed as quickly as it should have done since then. Uh, and I believe we have to actually focus very hard on what the threat is now 
in terms of uh, security and counterterrorism so we can tackle the new threats that are coming. And I haven't mentioned CBRNE, where I have to say the threat of one of those attacks is not a question of, uh, of if, it's a question of when. And we've rather in the past hit our head in the sand. And we are rapidly now getting our act together, because I've insisted now over the last two years, but again, an area that you know, all of industry can help us with. But we have absolutely to get ourselves focused in the same way against that threat. And there's no doubt that uh, an efficient and vibrant security and CT marketplace will help UK industry to take greater advantage of the export opportunities. It will provide the necessary security systems and equipment to everybody involved in protecting the United Kingdom. Uh, and thank you very much because you're a key and fundamental part of that. And I really do believe it's very important to our nation. Uh, I like the fact that actually on an average day, people in this country, I, I don't think are worrying about their security and the threat from terrorism. And I wouldn't want to frighten the horses there. And the reason they can do that, and it's good, I'm glad that is the case, because we must live our lives, travel, have fun. Because if not, then the terrorists are winning. But the reason we can do that is because we have some superb police, special branch, agencies, uh, military, people like you in, the, in, the, in this particular security industry who are looking after them. And long may that be the case. And all I would like is to do even better, because I would like to be in a position one day before I die of saying we've actually got there and we have excised this cancer. Thank you very much indeed for listening to me. Thank you.